Hi guys, welcome to another part of this tutorial series Next.js 13. This part is very important because in this part we are going to be talking about caching, how the pre-rendering works in Next.js 13 and what are the different types of pre-rendering like static generation, dynamic generation, what are the benefits of server side generation of the data. So we will be working on this same file page.tsx of the notes because this file is calling an API and we'll first talk about what is the difference between client side rendering and server side rendering and what is the benefits of server side rendering. So our project is running. First of all, let me tell you what the server side rendering is and how to validate that. This is the page which showing all the notes over here and on the empty space, if we right click over here and view the page source, it's going to open up another tab and let me show it like this so here you guys can see that it's showing all the data of the nodes so what's happened is it plays an important role for the search engines to improve the seo of the website because this content of the web page uh, becomes the part of seo engines the search engines so they can use this content to rank your website your web page right so there are other factors that plays the seo role but this server side rendering and the data generation from the server side we call it a pre-rendering data or a pre-rendering template uh, it plays an important role in the seo now if we go back to our project and i'm going to make this component use client okay and i'm going to save it and if i refresh the page line wrap now you can see that it's not loading all the content of this right because this api call is being made now on the client side but not being sent from the server side earlier this api call was being uh, done from the server side then the template was returned to the front end here the template is returned to the front end all the components and the api calls are being made on the client side and if we view the page source it's not loading up any data you can see that it's only showing the loading which was the part of that loader file okay so this client side rendering is not playing an important role for the seo so if you thinking that all the components should be server side well that's not the case uh, you actually if any component that require user interaction like the button click we need to call an api on the button click when we fill the form and submit the form then it will call an api it will return some data we will change the filter on the dashboard it will show the data based upon the filter from the front end it will call an api so in those cases you need to make the use client this keyword at the top because that require user interaction and that require if when you need some kind of use effect hooks and some kind of user uh, interaction or event handling then you need to use this use client at the top otherwise loading the data from the server side plays an important role in the seo of the web page i hope you have understood now let's move forward i'm going to remove this use client because this component is intended to be loaded from the server side so now let's say that this is called an api and uh, by default it is the static generation uh, and it static generation is one type of pre-rendering data so static generation means when we build our project from uh, this command let me run npm run build so let's see what happens so it's going to update this dot next folder okay and it's going to create an html file of this component and it's going to place that html file in dot next folder so the benefit of it is that even though it will still be returned from the server side it will still show that list data on this page source okay but it will not recall this api from the server side so it will be quick previously uh, actually what uh, will make it uh, again call from the server side but currently by default it will not call again from the server side when we will build our project so let's see dot next folder server app 
and here you can see it has created nodes.html and this html file has been created and whenever this route is going to hit from the server side after deployment this data is going to be rendered as it is from the server already preloaded because we have created this file in nodes.html at the build time so this is the default behavior of fetch when we don't pass any second parameters so the benefit of it is that you have seen most most website uh, the landing page of most website that contains different sections like the testimonials about us our partners our sponsors top headers footer and header and landing page only contain this and landing page can also contain uh, some kind of api data that does not change a lot it gets changed after days or months okay so in that case it's a good practice to actually pre-render statically those pages uh, which you want to be loaded as it is and it will speed up the load time of your website and usually the home page needs to be done and statically built in the build folder because when when your clients are going to open your website the home page should be quickly shown up on the website because it's already pre-built the api calls already made if the api calls are being made uh, even though if there is static data or the um, database data it will be loaded as it is okay quickly within milliseconds so in those cases you have to choose this default feature of fetch uh, function okay now let's see that your static page generation contains some api call that uh, does not change much does not change in a um, in few milliseconds but it gets changed after uh, 60 seconds or after a day right so but we still want it to be created at the build time okay uh, then what we need to do there is a second param of it next colon revalidate and we can pass the seconds after it okay and if I uh, save this file if I build it again, again it's going to create this notes.html file. All other files that you are looking are the server sites uh, as well and by default they are statically generated and I didn't pass the second params or this, this was just something like this or even if we don't call an API still that will be considered the static content note page uh, or any tag content is considered as pre-rendering unless and until we don't use use client at the top okay so for now here we are using uh, calling an api so here i'm setting the revalidate 60. so what happens is that this index.html or the notes.html file currently is going to update its api data after every 60 seconds okay it's the default behavior of the next js so if you want your any page or any component any area of your page to update its api data after every hour after every day after every month then you can set these props and it will automatically handle revalidation of this api call but this is just for performance that it needs to be created over here okay notes.html file so there is another thing that is called the server side rendering and let's say that we want to make this component server side rendering means that we don't want this file to be created over here at the build time but we want this api call to be made every milliseconds every nanoseconds okay in that case we don't want it to be called uh, created over here at the build time we want this api calls and update over content of this component every milliseconds on the runtime when we deploy our project on the production so how to do that there is another prop over here and we can call it like there is a cache and here there are these options force cache is by default when we don't add the second param the force cache means just like the statically loading the data from the server okay and no cache uh, is uh, like 
when there is no cache then it needs to load the data so it you can set this as well but when we want our api call to be made every nanoseconds on the runtime but don't want this file to be created in the dot next folder we can set to no store okay and if we save it and let me remove this next folder okay now if i run npm run build command it's going to create dot next folder and let's see that whether it creates the notes of a dot html file in this folder or not so i'm hoping that it will not create because we have set the cache no store so if you have uh, learned the previous version of next.js it was pretty difficult to remember different functions in previous version this feature was uh, done using the get server side props function in previous versions and the default feature of it like statically creating the file in the text folder uh, was used to done with the get initial props okay so now let's go to dot next server app and here i can't see the notes.html that means that this file will not be returned from the server uh, from this folder instead it will be regenerated again and again again and again whenever this url gets hit okay so this is how we can achieve the server side rendering it will behave just like the data will be shown over here okay it's just that whether we want our api call to be made after how much time every time statically build file to be returned or what so both are the types of server side rendering so it's up to us how do we want to choose which way and how do we want to load over which component depending upon uh, how early we want to load which page to the users on their browsers right so this was very important topic i hope you understood it um, i will re explain this topic in the project at the next of at the end of this crash course so i hope you like this video if you like it make sure you hit the like button and subscribe my channel thank you so much for watching